Hello everyone, this is Leanne Allegretto, the Service Hydrologist at the National Weather Service Office in Missoula. I'm bringing you the final spring flood update for the month of May so far. And like I said, this will be the final flood outlook update that will be recorded and presented. So let's take a look at where we're at for the first half of May. So what's changed since the last outlook, or at least the, the end of April? So far, the first few weeks of May have been well above normal for temperature trends, and that has combined with a well below normal temp uh, precipitation trend, excuse me, which has caused rapid snowmelt in the high terrain. That has led to early peaks in river flows, which were observed for the past couple of weeks. But we did have a recent cold and wet snowy system that occurred across southwest Montana and southeast Idaho, which did cause a minor rebound in snowpack. So that's what we like to see. However, if we take a look at the first half of May precipitation and temperature departures from normal, you can see a lot of red and orange, which is not favorable. Um, the precipitation for the month through May 13th has been about 70% of normal and below, with the exception of southwest Montana, which you can see in the green and the peripheral areas in the yellow. That ranges in the yellow from 70 to 90% of normal and in the green 90 to 110% of normal, which is good. And that was from that most recent cold system that went through. However, it doesn't matter where you are in the Columbia River Basin, you very much had a warm start to May. And that's following a somewhat warmer than normal April as well. So we are in the red across Western Montana and, and pretty much all of Idaho. And that means that our temperature trend for at least through May 13th has been above normal. So what has it done to our snowpack? Well, it's eroded it, as we would suspect. Um, not great in a lot of areas, but we are still showing at around 100% or at least in the 90% of normal for snow water equivalent. That is the map on the left, the snow water equivalent status as of May 13th, 2025. And for comparison, I just wanted to show May, May 13th of 2024 on the right graphic. And even though we started out with more snow and had more snow throughout much of the winter of 2024-2025, we're ending up in about the same. We see a lot of similarities between the left-hand graphic, which is this year, and the right-hand graphic, which is last year. So even though we had more snowpack to start, we have melted out so much that we're looking very similar in a lot of the subbasins to last year at this time. So unfortunately, we were not able to remain cool enough or wet enough to hold on to the snowpack that we had, and thus we've seen a large erosion in our high terrain snowpack. So let's get into some of the subbasins. What I'm showing on the left-hand side are the subbasins across central Idaho and north and west western Montana. I put a black box around the particular subbasin that I'm going to speak about. And then on the right-hand side is a graphic showing essentially the trends of how our snowpack developed at the beginning of the water year, which is October 1st, and all the way through as of today when I'm recording this, May 14th. And the black line is where I really want you to focus. That's this season's snow and the amount of water within that snow. And you can see the green line is the median, and that's an average between 1991 to 2000, uh, 2020. And so we want to be in the green for a lot of the season. That's ideal. Um, you can see the line for, for the median is above our black line of this season. And you can see we peaked early. And this particular basin is the Blackfoot Basin, which has seen, you know, it's been rough in the Blackfoot Basin um, as far as drought goes and lack of precipitation, lack of snowpack. But we did reach our peak um, in the first bit of April, I would say, give or take. And we'd like to see that closer to the end of April, early May, but we've already begun to melt. Now there's a sharp drop there and a sharp increase around the day that I'm recording this. And that is due to some of the essentially data feedback, but what we're seeing is a trend towards everything's melting out. So regardless of the sharp peaks, just kind of smooth that out. And what we're seeing is a trend downward and we should melt out you know, in the next few weeks and be completely done with that basin. Let's move on to the Bitterroot, which I have highlighted here. You can see we've lost a lot of snow in the Bitterroot Basin. Um, we are well below the median and we will very likely melt out of, of that basin in the next few weeks. Not, not going to hold on to a lot unless we see some sort of 
crazy cool system, but we are losing snow fast. And this this graph, the the sharp downward trend, really depicts how fast we're losing it. We could lose, you know, most of this basin by the end of the month. This is the South Fork Flat South Fork Flathead, which I have highlighted here. This encompasses basically what drains into Hungry Horse Reservoir, and they did really well this year. Um, we we peaked early, but our the the tr the black trend line excuse me <laughs> the black trend line did get up into that bluish purple area which shows above the median which is which is great uh, but we do see a downward trend so things are melting out if we follow the green line which is the median line again we could melt out somewhere in the late mid to late June area which would be pretty pretty normal for this area and that would be ideal. Let's move into central Idaho and highlight the lock saw. Again, it's in the red on the left-hand graphic, but you can see we've we peaked super early um, and it, we're losing it fast. I mean, we, we don't have much more to go in the lock saw to melt out. And then further downstream into the clear water, we peaked almost normal for snow accumulation, but we are losing fast. We're below that green median line and we don't have much more to melt out in that basin. Let's move back up north to the Middle Kootenai. Pretty normal for, for the most part. We were above normal there going into January on the black line. And then we kind of evened out everywhere, leveled out in January as we saw a very dry January. And uh, then we started to accumulate again. We peaked a little bit early. And then we have now started the downward trend in the Kootenai. Not too far below the median, so not bad. But if it continues to melt off quickly, we will melt out before the, the average time period in that subbasin. And then back down south, we'll hit the middle salmon and panther. Very, very little left to melt out in this subbasin as well, draining into the, the salmon in the Panther Creek area. So I did not hit every single basin for in interest of time. However, if you Google National Resource Conservation Service Snow and Water Interactive Map, you will find the, the same resources and you can check it out on your own in your own time. The link itself is so long that I didn't put it here. So just kind of type that into Google or your web browser of choice and you can check that out on your own. So what does this all mean? I've been showing this graphic through the past few outlooks and the probability of our main stem rivers exceeding their flood stage now through September 1st is extremely low. We've seen our peak, we are melting out fast, it would take a lot for us to maintain or even gain snow going into the end, the latter half of May and June, which is our, that's our flood season. So the only one that's showing a 5% probability of exceeding its flood stage is the Swan River. So that, that's that. I'll provide an 8 to 14 day outlook courtesy of the Climate Prediction Center. That covers the rest of May for the most part, May 21st through the 27th. And while we are remaining in a near normal to slightly below normal temperature, we do look to remain fairly dry. So um, we may hold on to that snowpack due to a cooler regime, but we are certainly doesn't look like we're going to be adding to it. And with that, I want to thank everyone for watching and thank you for your support of what we do here. This is the final spring 2025 flood outlook and update for the season. However, you can always check and monitor the latest weather and water updates on our website, www.weather.gov. Thanks again and have a great summer.